Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage six of Dolphin A. Just under 200 kilometers long, but it's got two monster climbs in today's stage. Both categorized two climbs. Problem is, though, the last one finishes with about 60 kilometers to go on today's stage. Now, I told you guys yesterday, if I was bike exchange, I wouldn't spend any energy looking after Dylan Grunewagen, their sprinter here on today's stage because he can't climb and there's no chance he can get back to the peloton on today's stage six after that last category two climb. I had some comments last night that I read. One was from Paul Bruning and he asked, what was going on with Dylan Grunewagen? Is this going to affect his Tour de France chances and selection? Is his form really bad? Is it the course here at Dauphiné? Why can't Dylan Grunewagen win a stage here at Dauphiné is basically what he's asking me. Well, here's the problem, Paul. When you look at the course here at Dolphin A throughout these eight stages, they're not ideal for a pure sprinter. So all the pure sprinters didn't arrive here at Dolphin A. Really, Dylan Grunewagen's the only pure sprinter in this peloton here at Dolphin A. Of course, Wild Van Aert's a sprinter, but he also can make it over the climbs. You look at Ethan Hader from Ineos, same scenario. He can make it over the climb and he has some speed. But when you're talking about Albacine Phoenix, when you're talking about Quick Step, you look at their team here, they have no pure sprint. They would rather play away, play the chances of getting riders in the break versus trying to bring anything back for a field sprint. So they're not there. Now when you look at other teams like Lotta Sudol, when you're talking Caleb Ewan, he's not here. He started the Giro and he's going to go straight to the Tour de France, possibly do Swiss in between. But whatever the obstacle reason, he's not showing up here at Dauphiné. So that leaves Dylan Grunewagen with Bike Exchange as the sole pure sprint team here at Dolphin A. So, Paul, you got to ask yourself, when you watch these climbs and, and you see Dylan Grunewagen getting dropped, you see Bike Exchange, first off, a little bit discombobulated because they never send the whole team right away for Dylan Grunewagen on all these earlier stages. So they just don't have the strength to get their pure sprinter back up to the peloton when up front, Jumbo Visma's Wild Van Aert, they're happy to have Dylan Grunewagen missing when it comes to the finishing sprints here on these earlier stages and other teams like Enos are happy to have Dylan missing too so you got two incredibly strong teams on the front in the form of Enos and Yumbo Visma and you got one team back there discombobulated all over the place called Bike Exchange with Dylan Grunewagen and they just can't get him back up to the front of the group. Now, when we get to the Tour de France, Paul, what you want to look at, what you want to pay attention to on all these sprint stages, when Dylan Grunewagen gets dropped, he's going to have Alpacine Phoenix back there because they're going to have their sprinter dropped and he can't climb either. So that's going to be two teams back there chasing. Quick step, when they talk about Fabio Jakobsen, he's going to get dropped on the climb about the same time as Dylan Grunewagen. So then there's going to be a third team back there chasing. When you look at Lada Sudol, Caleb, you and it's probably going to be dropped now you're going to have at least four teams back there chasing full gas to get themselves back up to the peloton that's 20 riders riding the front 20 strong and dominant teams back there riding the front to help dylan grunevay and get get back up to the peloton to have a chance at winning stages at the Tour de France. So, Paul, don't sweat it any at all because it's still early here with a couple more weeks to go to the Tour de France after Dauphiné finishes. And Bike Exchange, Dylan Grunewald is going to have a lot more help to get back up to the peloton at the Tour de France. So here, this is just the worst scenario possible for Dylan Grunewald to give himself a shot at winning the stage. Now, remember yesterday, I joked around and I said there's no chance if I was bike exchange, I'd spend any energy helping Dylan Grunewagen on today's stage. But as we know, nothing is set in stone. And today's stage actually looks like it's a perfect stage when we start getting down to the finish of today's stage for bike exchange Dylan Grunewagen to be able to win here on stage six. When the cameras come on, it's 45 kilometers to go. And there's a group of six up the road, a strong group of six. And they got two minutes and 45 seconds. Pierre Roland, the current KOM jersey where he's represented in the front from B&B &B Hotels. He's got company because Warren Bargui from Arkea Sam 6 up there. Valentin Ferran from Total Energy. This rider has put on a show earlier here in 2022 because I remember him from Trino Adriatico when the group was small down to about 50 riders and he was attacking solo. So he's got the big quality. You guys at home might not be familiar with him and he doesn't have wins on his resume 
but I'm telling you, Valentin Ferrand is the real deal because what I've seen him do in the past here in 2022 season, you know he's strong. Now there's still some more company back there in the form of Jeffrey Bouchard from AG2R, Victor Lafay from Kofidis, he's up there. Bruno Aramai from FDJ, he was there, but he got dropped out and went back to the Peloton. Now, up front with that gap at 2 minutes and 45 seconds, behind in the Peloton, guess what? It's not Jumbo Visma chasing. Even though the rider up front, Andre Bagioli, is only 3 minutes and 2 seconds down on the general classification of Wout Van R, Jumbo Visma still doesn't have to chase. Because in the back end chasing, it's going to be Intermarche and Trek Segafredo. Now, shortly after that, Intermarche is upset. They're going to pull off the front. And it's the full squad of Trek Segafredo chasing, but they're not doing any damage. That gap is still staying at about 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Jasper Steubens will go back there and he'll talk to Filippo Ghana from Team Ineos. Hoping that Enos want another field sprint here on stage six for their sprinter, Ethan Hader, who's come up close but hasn't been able to beat Wout Van Aert. Now they don't get any help. Trek Segafredo finally pulled the plug. We'll see some other teams pop on the front. Yembo Visma do a couple more visits to the front. But when I point one thing out, when you go back to the back of the peloton, Bora Hans grows back there. And yesterday, second place there, Jordi Mayus. He's in the peloton. He's number 14 on the dosar on the back number there on tagged on to his jersey but he's at the back and they'll only send about one guy to the front occasionally throughout this stage six i don't understand what bora hansgro is thinking at this point in time if you just got second on yesterday's stage the wout van art and only lost by about a quarter of a wheel i gotta believe i'm putting my full team on the front now just under 30 kilometers to go it's dylan grunewagen that, that gets back up to the peloton at this point in time when i'm sitting on the chesterfield i'm thinking bike exchange Go to the front and start pulling. Bring this group of six back. You still got enough time. The gap's still at about two minutes and 45 seconds. It's about 30 kilometers to go. If you do the math, you can still bring this group back. And if you do the math and believe the tactics should be raced right, you got to ask yourself why Bohr or Hansgrohe doesn't get on the front with bike exchange. Two teams pulling 100%. We already saw Trek Segafredo want that break back. So that's three teams pulling full gas. You're throwing in Intermarche, who were riding the front early here with 45 kilometers still to go in today's stage. Now, now all of a sudden, you got four teams back there. You know a fifth will show up eventually. But nobody is working well together. With 25 kilometers to go, there's an interview set up there with Wout Van Art. He said today's stage is going to be a hard stage, probably a stage with the, for the breakaway, but we're going to have to wait and see. Mostly, though, what he communicates to us is that they're concerned about tomorrow's Saturday and Sunday stage because we get into the big mountains here at Dauphiné. Wild Van Art's got a sizable lead, but you got to believe they want to keep all their guys as fresh as possible. So Jambo Visma's a little worried about that group of six up there with Ad Andre Bagioli from Quick Step being a threat on general classification, but so far they haven't had to do much work. Anytime the group's up front, uh, the peloton have stopped working. Jumbo Visma will find themselves on the front. And then shortly after that, another team will come back up to the front. Finally, with just under 20 kilometers to go, Bike Exchange will get up on the front. But the only problem is, again, they're just discombobulated all over the place. Let me point out, there's two at the front, two in the middle, and two at the back. You're not going to bring back a group of six of this kind of power with two riders at the front. And UAE Team Emirates got two up there too, which doesn't make any sense to me. Because UAE Team Emirates, let me remind you, Brandon McNulty's in this race. If, if they can use some more energy of... Yumbo Visma on today's stage, maybe tomorrow, Saturday stage and Sunday stage in the big mountains. Primoz Roglic, Wild Van Art, Jonas Vinigo could possibly be left with fewer teammates and give Brandon McNulty, who's a little bit down on general classification for that awful bike change during the team time, during the individual time trial on stage four here. Give him a shot of going up the road and possibly winning a stage and getting back up on the general classification. Instead, UAE Team Emirates are up front working with bike exchange, but they're not doing enough damage because the gap when they got up there was at about 245. They'll take about a minute off, but the problem is that the only reason that gap's coming down is because that group of six are starting to play a little game. With about 15 kilometers to go, Yumbo Visma get back on the front because they want to keep everything under control. But you know the Yumbo train up there at this point in time is not going full gas. The group of six, they solid. They got a great lead here going with 10 kilometers to go. Still over a minute and 15 second gap to the Peloton being led behind from Yamba Visma. 
just under 10 kilometers to go at the back of the Peloton. So they're going downhill. We're going to see some arguing back there. It's going to be from Milano and Page wearing the green jersey. We see Hugo Page, and he's drifting a little bit from the right to the left. And then we're going to see the UAE Team Emirates sprinter, Milano. He's going to grab the hip of Page and kind of sling off it. He's upset. It looks like he's throwing a punch to the face of Page. Misses. They, they separate a little bit, and then Milano will come back to throw another punch to the face of Page. You got to believe this is going to be a problem later with the officials. Now up front in that group of five with about five kilometers to go, it was Warren Bargui that started the little tactical game of sitting on at the back, and now it's going to be AG 2R Bouchard that throws in the first attack as they're just cresting over the last little bump here with less than four, five kilometers to go on today's stage. It's brought back right away, and behind in the peloton, it's going to be Sweeney from Lala Sudo throws in attack. I don't quite understand the math here because there's no chance the Lala Sudo rider is going to go up the road and bridge the gap up to the six up front. Now with just under 1.2 kilometers to go, it's Andre Ubagioli quick step, the fastest in this group on paper. He's on the front of the group of six. He'll take the lead and then behind as they come through the roundabout there, it's going to be Valentin Ferrand sitting last wheel. He's the caboose as they come out of the roundabout with 1K to go. We'll see all the riders look back as the game start to play. Warren Bargui with about 900 meters to go. He's going to drift out of the fourth position in line, and he's going to drift right behind last position in the caboose. It's Valentin Ferran. Like I said, he starts to follow the Archaic Samsung rider as the gap opens up between him and the others. Valentin Ferran throws in a vicious attack with about 750 meters to go straight up the middle. Andre Baggioli being the fastest rider of this group of five left. Everyone's forcing him to do the work on the front. Andre Baggioli is looking for some help with about 400 meters to go. Let me remind you guys, he's been on the front since 1.1 kilometers. That's 700 meters. That's a long time for anyone to be on the front with still 400 meters to go in today's stage. His legs are getting tired. Ferran up front. He's going solid on the pedals. The peloton's starting to come in the picture. The gap there that Valentin Ferran's just about too much for anybody to bring it back with 250 meters to go. Pierre Roland, the B&B &B hotel rider, he throws in a big attack, but it's too late. Valentin Ferran's going to take a victory here on stage six of Dauphiné, their second victory for total energy. Energies, let me remind you. And they had the race lead with Vermos after stage two victory from the rider. Now they get two stage victories here at Dolphin A plus the yellow jersey. So it's a total success for the French total energy rider. Second on the stage, Pierre Roland will hold off the others to get second. And third will be Warren Bargui. Andre Baggioli, the fastest of this group of six, will have to settle for fourth. Behind in the peloton, first across the line is going to be Milano from UAE Team Emirates. But he He's not going to get seventh on the stage because he's going to get DQ'd and kicked out of today's Dolphin Day. He won't start tomorrow's stage as the officials see the punch to the face as being just way too aggressive and dangerous here at Dolphin A. UAE Team Emirates rider, he'll apologize to the public afterwards, but he's going home. That'll be the end of his Dolphin A run. Now, UAE Team Emirates had another hit on today's stage because it was Iruso, their GC leader, that had to drop out of today's stage. And Team Enos, Michael Kwiatkowski, dropped out of today's stage with knee pain. So, Enos are down one strong rider. UAE Team Emirates are down two riders. Yumbo Visma are looking solid. They didn't have to ride much through today's stage. And they still keep race leader Walt Van Aert ahead of all the other favorite general classifications by over a minute on his teammate Primos Roglic and then almost two minutes on every other GC favorite here at Dolphin A. Tomorrow's stage in the mountains should be exciting. Keep in mind when those attacks come from the GC favorites, Walt Van Aert, Jonas Vinigo, Primos Roglic, those three riders can sit on any attack. If Wout Van Aert has some good form, if his mountain legs have started to come back, the kind of form we've seen from last year's Tour de France, if those legs come back, Wout Van Aert can win here at Dauphiné. But if his legs don't come back, don't worry, because Jumbo Visma have Primos Roglic. And like I said before here on the Butterfly Effect, he can pull out the Wout Van Aert card no matter who's attacking. He just goes, hey, I got Wout back there. I don't have to do anything. So when we start seeing the attacks on tomorrow's stage from Enric Moss and all the other GC favorites, Bahrain Victorious got some solid numbers with Dylan Toons back there. And of course, UAE Team Emirates, Brandon McNulty, he's got to go on the tack and try to get a stage and get himself back up on the general classification here on this final weekend of Dolphin A. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Got some interesting racing to come on Saturday and Sunday. Today's race, in my honest opinion, 
I thought it was viewed terribly in terms of how they how all the camera work did. It was almost impossible to figure out how the break had gotten away. When did the break go? Why was Dylan Grunewagen able to get back on? The only thing I can tell you in my experience with the limited TV coverage that I had on today's stage is that the Peloton must have been fast attacks throughout today's stage like crazy. That group of six went away, the Peloton sat up, that let Dylan Grunewagen and Bike Exchange get back on. Why they didn't start chasing right away with Bora Hansgrohe is beyond me, and I'm sitting here still in disbelief because believe it or not, after the two category climbs on today's stage, today's stage six was the best opportunity for Dylan Grunewagen and Bike Exchange to win a stage here at Dolphin A. Instead, they dropped the ball just like they have at every other stage here. The biggest knuckleheads, I got to believe, on today's stage have to be Bike Exchange. But Bora Hansgrohe, I'm going to throw you up there with Bike Exchange too because why you weren't chasing with your whole team to try to bring this back for the last real sprint stage here at Dolphin A is beyond me. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. There's big racing still to come with Saturday and Sunday, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Butterfly Effect.